Urinary tract infections are extremely common. Around one in two women and one in 20 men will get a UTI in their lifetime. Plus, once you've had one UT challenge, you're way more susceptible to another in the future. That's why you just need Just Thrive's UT123. This product can actually prevent UTIs while maintaining your urinary tract health. UT123 targets both immediate and long-term relief. We've all heard to drink cranberry juice for your urinary tract, but did you know that for the full effects, you need the whole cranberry? Not just juice, but the skin, flesh, and even the seeds. Well, UT123 uses superior ingredients that utilizes the whole fruit. This supplement truly is the full package. So if you're someone who struggles with the constant urge to urinate, a burning feeling when you pee, pelvic pain, or just want to be proactive in your urinary health, Just Thrive is for you. Just Thrive is so confident you'll love their product that there is a 100% money-back guarantee on every purchase made through JustThriveHealth.com. And for a limited time, you can save 20% off site-wide at JustThriveHealth.com with promo code SEXWITHEMILY. That's JustThriveHealth.com and use code SEXWITHEMILY for 20% off your order. You're going to love it. Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol, the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion. Whether it's to improve your sleep, I love their sleep gummies, I take them everywhere, your mood or your focus, they even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company, they use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Have you guys heard my news? I have a new sex gig. I'm not a porn star. It's better. I just launched my new premium skincare brand called Emily and Tony. These products are tried and true to help spice up your sex life, which is what I'm all about. I'm talking about massage oil candles that are one part candle, one part body oil, and check out these flavors. They come in delicious scents like creme de vanilla, cocoa, and fougere. And they're hydrating, and they leave your skin feeling super luxurious. We even have a product for the guys called Down Under Comfort that helps keep their balls smelling fresh and clean and dry all day, which is exactly what you want, right? So guys, if you take care of your balls, your partner will take care of you. So help us keep this podcast free. Use code EMILY to get 20% off your first purchase at emilyandtony.com. Trust me, you'll love them, and you're welcome. You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. Well, you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. about sex with emily go to sexwithemily.com where you can listen to our podcast sign up for our mailing list and please sign up for our rss feed so you'll never miss another sex with emily show you can also donate to our show we've got a donate button on the website if you'd like to contribute share the wealth and the love and I, you can also find me on facebook sex with emily is my fan page and on twitter emily morse m-o-r-s-e we also have an audience survey up if you wanted to uh, tell us what you like about the show what you don't like about the show we're down with that and we're always looking for advertisers. So if you're interested in advertising in the show, you can email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com. And as you know, we're doing more shows, and this is our longer show. So here we are. Hi, Menace. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I have a funny story. Can I start off with a story? Yeah. Oh, is that one more thing I got to yeah. do. I got to say one more thing. We're going to be right. reading your emails today that you sent to feedback at sexwithemily.com. 
Topics include the dating and waiting game, a man who really orgasms, the spit versus swallow debate, and gold diggers. And we'll also be giving some dating sex tips. Okay, Menace. I got to tell you what happened to me last night. Tell me. Last night, I was working here late, and I had to go home, but I was thinking, oh, I'm, I'm a little hungry. I'm going to go grab something to eat. At Starbucks? <laughs> yeah. So I grabbed something to eat. I I call up some girl, and I say, hey, can you pick me up? And she said, fine. Were you, were you calling her because you wanted a ride or you wanted to have No, that's why I wanted a ride. Okay. So I call her up, and... As I'm waiting, this girl comes by and slaps me in the ass and says, I'm cute. And she says she has porno in her hotel room. And if I would like to go watch it with her. Are you serious? Was she a prostitute? She wasn't a prostitute. She was like, because yesterday we had all these celebrations for the Giants Oh, the Giants. Yeah, we got to talk about that. So she was just there for the celebration. She's like in Giants gear. So she was was wasted? Was she wasted? She didn't seem wasted. She just seemed. She just thought you were cute. It was weird. Okay. so And so what'd you do? I said, ah, nah, I have to. I'm getting, I'm getting somebody to pick me up. Right. Then she walks down the street and then turns back around and comes back. And she goes, you're still here. And I'm all, yeah, I'm waiting for my ride. She goes, come on, let's just go. She goes, I'll let you come on my face. Are you serious? Yeah, she, oh my god! Did go, she know who you were? Did no, you to the I don't show? know. I don't know. Is that like every man's fantasy? Like, she's okay, like, come on. She was staying at the she, Western honey, St. She Fantress. must have been drunk or a prostitute or something. Oh, who okay. says things like that? I know, right? Not that they. Not that you're not a cute guy, and I happens. wouldn't. I would slap your ass if I walked past <laughs> your ass. But I don't think that's it was funny. That proves our point awkward. that every man, the fantasy is for to come on a woman's face. Not every man, but a lot of Because we were talking yeah. about this a few weeks ago. And who doesn't want to do that? I, not all men, but many men. I, I think it's a I fantasy. I think 99.9% of men. I don't know. Let's find out. Feedback at sexfamily.com. <laughs> Where would you like to ejaculate? Anyway. Yesterday was crazy. So my office is downtown. And I had a meeting like five blocks from my office right before, the, like two hours before the parade started. I could not get across Market Street. It was they oh, said yeah. a million people showed up. Mm-hmm. I was there was it was sidewalk to sidewalk. Were you down there? I didn't get near it. Was it was a sea of fans. I literally yeah. got to the point where I still had my computer with me and all my bags because I carry like a million bags mm-hmm. with me on the way to my office after I park. And it was madness and I just really wanted to not be in that crowd and I I couldn't get out of it. I couldn't move at one point. They're like, "Where are you going? You can't move. There's nowhere to go." Mm-hmm. And literally I was getting claustrophobic. Yeah, and I was really happy and excited for the Giants, but I could—I don't know how I got in the middle of the crowd Ima- on Market Street, imagine, right, when the, right when the parade was coming. Yeah, imagine like a rock concert front row. That's what general it felt like. Mission. It felt yeah. like that. It felt <laughs> yeah. like a rock concert front row. Like I hadn't felt that trapped in a crowd in mm-hmm. years. I can't remember the last time where I really—I kept moving and trying to get somewhere, but there was nowhere to get because it was sidewalk to sidewalk and the middle of the street filled so there was not even like yeah. a, i kept thinking there'd be like a pocket of air once i got to the mm-hmm. mcdonald's no no so i finally got down the street and went to starbucks and just sat there and worked and you know they have free wi-fi now at starbucks you I'm, must know that because you're eating at starbucks yeah i love starbucks right i know and check this out uh if you know all these people we have a lot of listeners overseas so if they don't they don't know what the hell we're talking about. Okay, tell them. We're talking about the World Series and the celebration in Baseball. San Francisco. So if you uh, go on the Google, google.com, type in for images of San Francisco Giants celebration, and you'll see how insane. They have like aerial views right. of how many people in such a small space. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, it's the first time we've ever won the World Series. Yeah, here in San Francisco. It was amazing. Yeah, and we're, I mean, it's a small, big city. We're only seven by seven miles. Yeah. And people you know? don't realize there's less than a million people here too, which is yeah. why you have to go elsewhere to date people because I know everyone or I've dated mm-hmm. them. Yeah. But that's another point. But no, really, there are, yeah, less than a million people. It was amazing. I got to check out the pictures because yeah. I was in it, so I didn't want anything else to do with the Giants yesterday. Mm-hmm. But um, I will look at the pictures. You should. Because you know me. I'm not really doing that. Kind of Did you see anybody surfing. that you would have sex with? In the well, country. I was looking around and there was really good because looking Because there's guys. extra... There's extra people there. There was good looking guys in the financial district because that's where all the men in suits and mm-hmm. doing all that. You know, and I know I work downtown, but I'm always in my office. I'm barely walking around. And there was really good looking guys. There were people like, I don't know, men in suits I think are very attractive. Mm-hmm. I find men in suits just kind of something very hot about it. And there was a lot of good looking guys. And I was thinking like, where are you guys going? Can I? And I was that talking to a few of them. And um, yeah, I found a lot of attractive men. In there San was Francisco. a lot it of attractive girls in town for the Giants. I think a lot of people came from outside yeah. the city. 
<laughs> they, they need to stay. To stay here. I enjoy know. life. Speaking uh, actually, of that, when I yeah. got – sorry to uh, interrupt you. But actually, when I did get my ass slapped, I was wearing a tie and a sweater See? vest. See? You were. You, she probably thought you were a businessman <laughs> yeah. and she's a prostitute. Oh, and that's what thanks. They look for. Okay, fine. Yeah. What, when the hell did she's you wear a tie? I had to go to some service thing. Oh, okay. Um, so speaking of dating, so you know I'm speaking of men that are attractive. So the guy that I'm dating, the L.A. guy, uh-huh. is coming to town this weekend. I haven't seen him in like five weeks. Yeah. And he asked me, he's like, I want to meet your friends. And I'm having this whole dilemma because I'm like, which friends? I have so many friends in mm-hmm. San Francisco, really good friends, you know, that are like my people, my family. My friends are my family. Your peeps. So we, there's some friends that are like so close that they'll just be like, Emily, like they'll just make fun of me and mm-hmm. just be totally raw and real. And that's awesome too. And then I've got other friends, like maybe we should do a group dinner. But my friends aren't really into that. It's more like we always hang out at someone's house and just do whatever. But I'm just kind of like, do I, am I ready for him to meet my friends? I would like him to meet because last time, this is why this happened. And he's having me plan. But last mm-hmm. time, he, the last two times he was in town, I've only seen him twice. He made mm-hmm. the plan. He made the dinner reservations. This last time he was See, here, the, we went out with all his friends. Mm-hmm. He's screwing up right now because you can't let a woman, you can't let women make the plans. It never works out. I'm just it never works out. Because I'm like, of course I didn't make reservations, and it's hard to get reservations on a Saturday night. And I just don't where do like you go to get reservations? Everywhere you eat, you need. in San really? Francisco. There's the most amazing restaurants. You need. Well, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, what? Applebee's. I don't go to Applebee's ever since I went to... there and they had a duct tape seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not taking but any more duct tape seats. There's or plenty of restaurants eat. you can go to that are good restaurants that you don't have to have. An appointment. Yeah, you do. <laughs> For all the ones I'd want to go to, you do. Oh, excuse me. But I'm also feeling a little bit like I want to just be with my friends this weekend. I have a friend in town from L.A. Isn't that weird? I'm not into dating. And it's funny because someone, like, tweeted me mm-hmm. and said, like, why don't you just – and I'm tired of hearing about all your, your dry spell. You might as well start having sex again. And there's a part of me that's like, I, I kind of just, just want to hang out Why don't you friends. just tell this guy not to come then? Tell him to come by uh, next Too week. late. Too late. Why? What's, because what's he's, he's, I like him. I what's he flying? Like him. What's he flying? I'll he's, tell you how much it costs. To he's flying from L.A. Flight. Yeah, but what's his? Oh, I have no idea. I'm not picking him up. Did you pick him up last time? No. No? Do you think I should? I have no, plans. No, no. I'm meeting with my web, web person on Saturday morning. Anyway, he's coming Saturday and saying until Monday, I think. Because if he flies Virgin, even though I love them to death, they cost a lot to change. Flights. Really? But if it's anybody else, then come on, dude. Okay. Change it next week. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. But I think I also have just gotten so used to not having a man in my life that I'm sort of in this really good groove now. I'm getting more work done than I've ever gotten done in my life, and I'm just mm-hmm. like my life, my private, my home, my thing, being by myself. But I think it'll be good for me. But it's you weird. like being a hermit. I like being a hermit, and I like staying <laughs> home and working every night. And I know that's crazy, but I do. And I like seeing my friends, and I have another friend in town that I'm dying to see. So anyway, we'll work it out. You we'll must see. be studying a lot of sex toys then. You must be doing like a ton of sex toy reviews yes, by now. Yes, exactly. What's your favorite slang for, um, for the penis? Um, penis. You like the same penis? Do you like no, cock, wiener I guess. cock? If you must you know. know, why? You just like saying cock. Well, like, what do you? In what when you're talking with your girlfriends? Oh, when I'm talking with the pe- girlfriends. Yeah, got it. I thought you meant like during dirty talk. Okay. Uh, yeah. I just well, jumped right there. Okay. When I'm with my girlfriends, I probably say. Is penis. wiener? No, we you don't say wiener. Penis? Who says wiener? <laughs> I, say I think wiener. dick maybe too. Oh, is, okay. Like his dick was – oh, because this yeah. happened to my friend the other night. She was having sex with this guy. Yeah. And mm. this is something that happens often, I guess, with people. But she was having sex with him and she's had sex with him like three or four times now and she's mm. really into him. But the first time they had sex, she was like, he doesn't get that hard. And that happens to a lot of men. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of times it has to do with he's nervous the first few times they've been yeah. together. But now they've been together a few times, and he still can't maintain his erection. And so I'm trying to remember really? what lingo she used when she was explaining that to me. And I think she said his, his shaft. dick. His, I think she said dick. <laughs> really? Or maybe she said penis. I like saying. I like penis. What do you like? Unit, package. There's so many funny stuff. You need to mix it up. His package. His package. I don't think his. His junk. His junk would not. His stick. No, I don't know. What do you, I don't. What do you say when you're talking about your own? Huh? What do you say usually? For real. For real? I usually say, uh, because I like joking around about it. I say my wiener or something like that. I've never said wiener. You should, what do you say in, about vagina? Because vagina is such a not a fun word. Vagina? You say like the P word. <laughs> what? Pussy? Yeah. Uh, No. How about uh, during dirty talk? You don't talk, talk, talk dirty, do you? 
No. Yeah, well, kind of. I don't know. I don't want to tell you. Why? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Who are you going to tell? I don't know. Me. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm the person I'm having sex with. But, but do, yeah. do you wait for her to start? I think you've told me this before. You wait kinda, for her to start the well, dirty talk? Well, see, you have to, if you're going to go into dirty talk, you kind of have to dabble. You gotta, like, yeah, don't go right yeah. in with the hardcore. Not like, hey, you like want to stick my, you know, right. cock in your vag. Right. You know? Right. You can't be saying that. You got to say. You can. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, oh, you like you kind of like start with you like that. Yeah, that's that's all you say. No, Do you like yeah, that? exactly. You, like you that? say, how does that feel? Yeah, Do you yeah. like when I touch you here? Yeah. Or does that feel good? You feel uh, so good, baby. That's how you start dirty talk. Yeah, but then you move it into like calling them a bitch and all that kind of Is stuff. That, you don't do that. <laughs> Honey, yeah? I cannot see you doing what? that. What? <laughs> if you do, you really do that. What? Like you're such a horny bitch or something yeah and call them sluts and all yeah, that yeah gar- girls like that sometimes yeah you don't i don't see you doing that though why because i just don't i have this image of you as not what? being a dirty sex talker dude That's- i say stuff like that okay good right. you say you're my what little do you slut. say you're my little what whore. do you say as a woman I'm saying like, stuff to a guy what do you say i'm like i'll do you, say are you doing like instructions it's hard to do it when you're not there yeah. you know it's hard to like sing a song when it's not playing it's hard to do dirty talk when you're not in the moment. Yeah, that's why I'm like freezing up right now. I feel like I could say like Are you giving ins- instructions? Are turn you- left, turn left. No, right, no, no, right, no, no, right. no, no. It's like, you know, F me, F me or something like that. Or do you Yeah, sometimes I'll be like, I love the way you F me. Yeah. Or- but are you do you ever go where you take the like the kind of the man role? Do you like when I do this and blah blah when you're talking? Sometimes I've done that. Like mm-hmm. do you like when I'm sucking your <laughs> whatever but yeah i've done that before but usually at the beginning it's just more like that's so hot or i love when you do that you know that's a great way to give instructions to someone is to tell them that you like what they're doing for mm-hmm. all the women who are like why doesn't he do what i do it's like well, even when he gets close to it be like i love when you touch my neck you got mm-hmm. i do that all the time like if a guy's kissing my neck i'm like oh my god i love when you do that but you know what the problem is? A lot of times I tell them mm. and they don't remember and they don't even do it more than they should. I've had that with lots of guys I've dated. I've been like, I've told you a million times that I like it when you grab my ass and you don't. And it bums me out. Bastards. Why don't they listen? Grab my ass. It's pretty easy to do. Everybody grab my <laughs> ass. It's pretty easy. And yes. I, just, I have a good ass if I do say so myself. <laughs> I don't know. You know what we need to talk about too? Ustream. When the hell are we going to do that? Ustream. When? Because uh, this show's going to air in like a week. Yeah. And then we got to... Tuesdays. What day? What day you want to Tuesdays, start doing it? She thought Tuesdays at four. Tuesdays four p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Exactly. Uh, In that, the PST. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Are you? Are you can you do that? I Tuesday can do at that. Four? Tuesday at four. Where are you going to do it from? I guess your house? from my office because I'm still in my office at four. Really? Is there anyone else around? I could just close the door. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I want you to be there too, kind of. Uh, I gotta anyway, go to your everyone office. pay I've attention to my website, Ustream. You've never been to my office. Ustream, where we can live. It's live. We'll interact. Okay. Okay. I we just, can do it. It's on we, my list. We'll make it work. Okay. Perfect. Give it two weeks. Two weeks. We'll make sure it Four happens. o'clock on Ustream. We can all chat. Okay. You can see me and stream. You'll tweet it out. Follow you on Twitter. <gasps> Follow me on Twitter, Emily Morse. Yeah. And then she'll tweet out when she's live. I'll tweet it out, yo. And then you can watch it. Okay, let's move into some sex in the news. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. Mm. Ouch. 80% of women faking orgasms, says study. It says ouch. Whatever. Some (laughs) women fake orgasms. This we know. But did you also know that 80% are moaning and groaning? Not only when they are absolutely not climaxing, climaxing or coming anywhere near it, but when they are fervently wishing for the whole thing to be over. Really? At least that's what a team of British researchers found when they studied 71 heterosexual women between the ages of 18 and 48. They found a whopping 80% faked orgasms during vaginal intercourse at least half the time. A smaller group was even more prolific with their oohs and ahs. The study found 25% of the women faked it 90% of the time, according to MSNBC. Researchers found that women are often the quietest. Listen to this. Researchers found that women are often quietest when they are actually receiving pleasure, like during oral sex or foreplay. Then they make the most erotic noises when sex starts feeling uncomfortable or when they get bored. They also get noisy when they sense their partner is ready to climax to boost their partner's self-esteem, many reported. The study's authors say women use vocalizations to manipulate male behavior to their advantage. 
But since, as an MC, MSNBC columnist pointed out, some well-meaning men are so fixated on making his partner climax that he won't stop until he thinks she has. Most women in the research said just fake it to be nice, unless, of course, they're faking that too. So I kind of think this is true. I think whenever I faked it, which I don't anymore, it's usually like when the guy is about to or, I, or, or when the guy is about to orgasm, I think I do make more noise. Mm-hmm. And I know that that helps. So I think yeah. not on purpose. Like I just think it's hot that I know mm-hmm. that he's about to orgasm. So I'll be like, oh, yeah, baby, something like that. Yeah. But, 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 but hotter than that. And, um, and, the, and the thing about the faking it is it is kind of true that when you're really into it and you're not making as much noise sometimes, some of the time. Like if someone's performing oral sex, it's like you're kind of focused. You're kind of in that moment. But then towards the climax, you do make a lot more noise. Anyway, 80% of women fake an orgasm. That's what I got to say. That's a bummer. Women should not fake their orgasms. <laughs> then why are they it's even having sex in the first place? It's sending a bad message to men. Men are thinking they're pleasing women all over the globe. And they're not. It doesn't. They just – it kind of sends a message Then uh, women need to give more direction on what they like. That's true. Menace, See, I flipped learned, it on you. You've learned so much. <laughs> Why? Because it's true. Women just tell them what you want. Why are you faking it? And I get mm-hmm. a lot of times we do it because we want to please them and because we feel like it's never going to – like we know – the point of no return when it's not going to happen, but just let them know it's not going to happen. But the reason is also, I and mean, we do it for the other person. We don't do it for ourselves. We do it so they think we can and they are, don't feel bad. And anyway, we've got some emails about that later because it got about men and women and faking and men and women and wanting to please each other through their orgasms. Anyway, I think it's all mm-hmm. fine. Sex is not just about the orgasm, P.S. Right. Okay, sh- <laughs> Chaz Bono. Chaz Bono, you know he had the sex change operation? <clears throat> yes. he. Cher not used to sex change yet. When Chaz Bono announced he was having a sex change to his mother, Cher, she might not have understood it, but she's clearly clearly trying to get it now. In an interview with Vanity Fair, the musical icon said she wouldn't have been able to handle the situation as well as Chaz if it had been reversed. If I woke up tomorrow in a guy's body, I'd kick and scream and cry and rob a bank because I cannot see anything but who I am, a girl. Mm -hmm. I would not take it as well. I couldn't imagine it. And though the singer has come to terms with her child sex change, it doesn't mean she's grown accustomed to it. Well, she's a very smart girl. I mean, boy, this is where I get into trouble. My pronouns are effed up, she said. I don't remember mm-hmm. to call her him. But Chaz doesn't seem to mind. She's really cool about it, an easygoing person. Can you imagine if your child had a sex change operation? That's kind of a major ordeal. That's a uh, big, yeah. I mean, really? You, like, give birth to a son and then you have a daughter, a daughter, then son? The Chaz really looks like a guy, though. I know. So he always so. knew. We always he always knew. He felt like a man, and so now mm-hmm. he's done it. Cher's down. She's cool with it. But I guess yeah. I could see being like him. Hers coming over. She's she Cher. She's Cher. Okay, <laughs> Prin- Prince of Brunei. Please don't talk about my sex, sex sculptures of myself. Did you hear about this? No. The Prince of Brunei, the younger brother of the famously rich Sultan, is suing two of his financial advisors, advisors for selling off a Long Island estate for much less than he thinks it's worth. The problem is the North Shore estate. In question, just happens to be where Jeffrey was storing six life-size, six life-size erotic statues of himself. Photos <laughs> obtained by his fiance, one of the women in the harem. He's got a whole harem. He doesn't want the pictures to be used in the trial because they could prejudice the jury. Basically, they have all these like it's like him with huge erections, and it's what? Got, yeah, exactly. So it says there's black bars over. You can look this up, but there's like erections and he's really muscular and he's in all these sexual positions and he's got a whole mansion filled with statues of himself. Talk about really? loving yourself. Yeah. Really? That's, so uh, that's fascinating. It m- must be nice. To I have a rich. naked picture of myself, but I, that someone painted once, but uh-huh. I never hung it up on my wall. Where and is I have it? that. Uh, it's, it's behind my, should behind eBay, my counter. Yeah. I should eBay a sex picture of myself. Does anyone want it? <laughs> is that a painting, it right? Or is it a photo? painting. Oh. I also have those photos. I should get that photo from Christina and that she took those pictures of me kind of naked but not really naked. I should hit her back on Facebook. She's been asking for I don't know what show she for was what? on. Oh, she wants the show? Yeah. She can she, just get it from iTunes. Everybody, Christina is a girl. Oh, Karina. I Karina. said it wrong. <laughs> Oops. Karina. I said it wrong. Karina and Marie Diaz. Yeah, took photos of you in uh, scantily clad. Scantily clad. Did you ever see them? Uh, yeah, you Some of me. them. I got to mm-hmm. do more. I mean, I got to do something with them. It's on the list. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move into some mail. All right. How about that? Dear Emily and Menace, I'm a bit worried because one of my very close friends of the opposite sex broke up with her boyfriend a while ago. But the real problem is that she admitted to me that she regrets ever dating a guy or having a boyfriend. She's beautiful and has a great personality. Although she's been asked out many times, she practically gives out the rejections. 
When do you think she'll be back in the game and ready to date again? Lots of love, Nabil from Ireland. So P- Nabil doesn't want to date her? P.S. No, you missed the point. P.S. Mm-hmm. I listen on my iPod to and from work and while on business trips. Okay, he's upset because he really likes this friend of his, and she just broke up with her boyfriend, and she's saying she wants nothing to do with dating, and he wants to know when she's going to be back on the dating track again. Can't predict. Hmm. Apparently, I'm not sure that she's into you, Nabil, or not. I can't tell. Um, but usually a lot of women. I don't want to be harsh, but I, that's the kind of feeling I'm getting. She's not that into you? Yeah, and I don't want him to get hurt because he's waiting around for this chick, and then all of a sudden she's dating somebody else. I know, I know. I don't want him to get hurt either. So but... tell her, let's go out, and if she says no, then uh, I would just say move on. Yeah, but I would wait a little. She's, she's announced that they just broke up. And mm-hmm. that she's not ready to date, which has happened to me before, not that often. But a lot of women I know, not me typically, because I typically go from one relationship to the next, which I don't do anymore, but I used to. But a lot of women I know physically can't imagine dating when they're going through a breakup. They're going through a breakup with someone, and they they break up, and they're like, I want nothing to do with the opposite sex. So that she might be in that refractory period where she just doesn't want to date right now. So I'd just be your friend for a while and see what happens. Yeah. That's what it sounds like she Maybe says. You can just ask her. As friends, you guys can go. As friends, let's go get go a burger. Burger or a couple shots. Let's get some shots. Let's get of, wasted. Uh, That's tequila. usually when I hook up with my friends. <laughs> tequila, the female Viagra. Yes. That's what my friend Patron Megan said once. or Don Julio, I recommend. Yeah, me too. I love tequila. Do you like tequila? I love tequila. Are you still Silver. not drinking? I'm not drinking. For how many days has it been now? Two? Two. No, I did what? What is it now? It's almost a week now. Oh, I'm proud of you. Yeah. You look great. No, I'm you trying. don't look like a hungover or anything. Not nice. that you usually do, but you know, I'm just saying. Thank you. Okay. I recently found your show and still catching up. I originally found the show on iTunes. I have a Linux Linux box now, so don't have iTunes anymore, but I have an app that downloads directly from your RSS feed to my phone. I don't even know how Linux works. Me neither. <laughs> I guess it's a tradition now to comment on the great handout debate, so here I go. I tend to agree with Menace, but I have only ever had one woman try. I am, however, willing to believe that a woman can be good at it if she has strong enough hands. I think it'd be fascinating experience to see if you could hook Menace up with someone that could change his mind about it. I'll totally hook you up with a woman that can give you a killer handjob. Yeah, right. Would you want that? A, a woman that can give me a good hand job. Yeah. Why Do you want not? me to introduce you to someone? Anyway, <laughs> okay, so that was just his point about the hand job mm-hmm. debate. Anyway, I tend not to respond to sex the same way that most men seem to. There seems to be some sort of disconnect where I have all the normal lizard brain reactions and orgasm easily enough, usually, but I very rarely, and I, I ejaculate easily enough, but I rarely orgasm. So he ejaculates mm-hmm. but doesn't orgasm, which you know is possible. As you can imagine, sex for me is usually all about the woman. Because of this, I really want to say thank you for your show. I'm learning a lot. I loved your fantasy show, and I'm really loving your interview shows. Those interviews I do with all the uh-huh. women. I love learning how to make my partner happy, and I'm really and, and I'm really seeing her perk up and become a more a bit more engaged. I will definitely, I will definitely be trying out a cock ring soon, and this weekend we'll be trying out a light bit of bondage for the first time. Daryl from Hillsborough, Oregon. Hey Daryl. Um, okay, so first of all, I think that that's normal that you can't you can't orgasm all the time. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. You you're welcome to go to your doctor and get a checkup. I always recommend that to people because there could be some issue that you're having. But I I think that's normal that men sometimes just regularly can't have orgasm. I was with a guy once who didn't. I know many guys who don't all the time. It's more common that they do, but they don't all the time. And every other day or every time you do or whatever isn't so bad. So I wouldn't worry about it. Really, that's what I think. <laughs> so, but I would say if it bothers you to go see your doctor and get a checkup, a lot of people don't want to talk to their doctors about sex stuff because they feel uncomfortable, but mm-hmm. really they're the best people to talk to. That's what I would say. Really? Nothing wrong with you though, Darren. You're fine, and I love that you love to please the woman, and I'm sure she, your girlfriend's really happy about it. So, appreciate that. <laughs> oh, All man. Right. What? I don't know. If you I feel like we're it. the ones that give them therapy. We do, don't we? I love, I love that. Like I was thinking today, there was some quote, there was something on the news. It was like headline news, Jada Pinkett Smith, you know, Will Smith's wife Mm -hmm. says, great sex is the most important, is the key to a happy marriage. And it was like, woo, I can't believe she said it. And it's like, what is wrong with America? We are so provincial in so many ways. We're so provincial that a celebrity makes a comment about her sex life being great and everyone's going to blow it up on CNN and cross a ticker. 
who cares? Like, I mean, it's great that she's saying that and people will realize sex is important, but that's what we're trying to do here every single day and and demystify sex and talk about it. Like, it's so important. It is important. People Damn are, it. <laughs> too shy is the problem. I know. We should have a sex parade in San Francisco. Oh, they have one, don't they? Yeah. They have many of them. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. Better relationships equal better sex. Sinclair Institute, the leader in sex education products for adults, has been saying it for over 20 years. I've seen some of their DVDs, and I highly recommend them. Find Sinclair's ad on my products page on my website, sexwithemily.com, and save 50% off any one item when you put in Emily50 at checkout. Enjoy the show. I promise your sex life will improve. Hi, Emily. Found your podcast on iTunes and have enjoyed listening to quite a few episodes. I listened to episode 92, which is in three parts. At the end of part two, you say you're going to talk about men's erogenous zones and their favorite female body parts. But part three obviously obviously skips that information and restarts further towards discussion. (laughs) Yeah, that used to happen on those part Mm -hmm. threes. I'll find it for you. Bummer. I wanted to hear it. An observation about Emily. Don't get married, girl, unless it's to a guy who'd be happy in an open relationship. About menace. What? Conservative, doesn't like hand jobs, laundry, or sex toys. Loosen up, bloke. You're on a sex show. Cheers. Dino. Conservative. He's from Tasmania, Australia. He's in back at show 90. You've become more open. Yeah. In the last 90 Oh, shows. speaking of stuff that we missed uh-huh. on our last podcast, we were supposed to talk I've, about something. I've got that letter Oh, right you here. do? Yeah. I'm going to read right. it right now. Okay. Okay. I'm glad you brought it up because it's actually... Okay. Thank you for... You're so smart. Ready? I try. This yes. is hilarious. This is from Jason. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, did I comment on this guy's post? Okay, thanks. Thanks, D- Dino from Tasmania. I totally Thank- appreciate it. I don't know what happened. Sometimes we used to do shows in three parts back in the 90s. and I mean, the 90s <laughs> shows, not in the, 90, the year of the 90s. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sorry they got lost, but I'll try to look for that information and re-talk about it on the show. Okay, this is a funny letter that I was going to read on the last show, and I didn't have a chance, but I'm going to read it now. But first, I need to have some agua. This is from Jason. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I'm behind on a few podcasts. I don't know if you remember my email, but I said I was going to drink with you guys. While yeah, listening, I remember him. While listening to the episode. See, background is Menace and I promised that on mm-hmm. episode 169 we were going to have a drinking party. Yes. So, last Saturday night, my wife went out with her friends and my son went was at the grandparents for the night. So, I started watching a college football game and drinking. When the game was over, I threw in the podcast and there was some comedian, comedian on. You two were in the studio and nobody was drinking. I was mm-hmm. super confused and kept drinking. Then in the beginning of the next episode, you guys said you forgot. So my wife gets home at midnight and finds me drunk by myself. I'll try to get this right. <laughs> wife says, hey, whoa, are you drunk all by yourself? Me. I was supposed to drink with Emily <laughs> Menace. Wife. Who? <laughs> me. The Sex with Emily podcast, remember? Wife. Are they in town? Me. No, they were supposed to drink in episode 169. And wife, you're going to drink with them? And they didn't? <laughs> me. Nope. And I'll tell you something else. Emily has lost her shot. I'm never having sex with her now. Wife, well, that's nice to know. Go to bed. <laughs> Me, good idea. LOL. Next time you say you're going to do this, you better. Otherwise, I'll get emails from friends saying I'm dr- I'm a drunk like Menace's Twitter friends are sending him. Jason from Baltimore. P.S. Menace hates balls and should call his mother more. All right. <laughs> Jason, we're so sorry we didn't drink. Yeah. When the hell are we going to do that, Menace? Um, man, because it's I'm just hard. Not drinking. We- Oh, you're well, not... well, what happened now, was... Now Menace is on a drinking vacation. Well, what happened was, this is what happened. We we can't drink in the studio here because we record at CVS. And this is, you know, a place of business. And at the time, I was doing another radio show at night. So I couldn't go after work during the day and go to your house and record it or at a bar. And now I have the time... But you're not drinking. I'm not drinking. But you're so, only not drinking for okay thirty days. So what? So what do we do? So we should just wait a little bit. Can we please just wait just a tiny bit to do that? Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. What but show are we, we on? One eighty. Well, no, this one is probably one eighty four. One eighty four. One eighty three. Something like that. We've done a lot of shows. Yeah. Last year. <laughs> so um, yeah. So what would be a good? We'll just figure it out. Okay. But sorry, Jason. You're I'm sorry, Jason. I really want to do it. It's just uh, Emily is a super busy person. I am too. I on top of doing this with her, I work at four other radio stations, and it's really hard to find but time where I can just get thing wasted. That you do? I love doing this. It's your love favorite, right? Doing because I don't really get to talk much on other. Right. Thanks. And you've got a lot to say. Yeah. I have a ton of I know. Sh- lot I know. Say, so. Okay. That was a hilarious letter. I love <laughs> it. Okay. Emily Menace. 
I feel I feel we need to take the swallow versus spit debate to a new level. Okay. How many men have tasted their own ejaculation, ejaculate, semen? How many men have tasted their own semen? Terry, my lovely wife, and I enjoy the sexual position where I stand on the edge of the bed while she lays on the bed with her long, tan legs spread wide with an ankle in each of my hands. We try to make sure Terry orgasms first, which is often the case as her fingers will dance. He wrote this very lyrically. Yeah. As her fingers will da- fingers will dance on her enlarged clit. After we both release, I drop to my knees, and with her legs still spread wide, I will lick semen out of her. This drives her absolutely wild, as it is erotic. After I'm sure the flow of love has ceased, I will crawl up on the bed, and she will kiss me deeply so she can taste the nectar of our coupling. We will usually French kiss, and she will let me fondle her breast as we catch our breath. Sometimes after we have anal sex, I will lick my semen from her, which sends her a euphor- euphoric. As, which sends her into euphoria. That's how erotic this is. I know this last scenario will totally freak out Menace. <laughs> if, you, if your love partner reaches a new level of friskiness by you performing something she does not expect, you, she will reward you with an increased appetite for sex. It certainly works for us. The show is funny and informative. Ian and Terry from Hamilton, Canada, where we download from iTunes. Sweet. Ian and Terry, that's awesome. I mean, <clears throat> listen, it is so true that when you push the sexual button when you push your sexual threshold and you do things that are not typical that it really does open up your sexual appetite it does make you more open sexually and it's good to do like i think that's hot i think uh they are doing something that i learned about in junior high and that it was a term it was what was called, it they called it snowballing Oh, right. Yeah. Where you, you know, taste your partner's yeah, semen, right? Yeah, back and forth. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. I'm a little under the weather. I know. So you're I apologize. so much. I apologize if I'm not that funny today. But, uh, yeah, I learned about that in junior high. Yeah, but he likes it, and they find it hot. And I think it's his last sentence is very mm-hmm. profound. I'm going to read it again because I think it's a profound. Okay. If, you, if your love partner reaches a new level of friskiness by you performing something she does not expect, she will reward you with an increased appetite for sex. I think, again, that is so true to surprise your partner, not just to go try something really intense that you've never done. You have to build up to it like everything else. However, trying something different, usually for couples, really just catapults their sex life to a new level. So I really like this. Ian and Terry from Canada. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there doing that stuff. Yeah, but they don't write me and tell me about it. So I appreciate (laughs) it, Ian and Terry. God, everyone always asks me, like, what's the most amazing thing you've ever heard? Or what's the most shocking? And I'm like, everything I love. Like, does anything anything ever gross you out or bother you? And it's like, nope, I love every letter. I read every single one. We still haven't cracked the code of foot fetish. I know. Do you have a foot (laughs) fetish? Email us. Feedback at sexfamily.com. Why do you like feet? People, Why? A lot of people like feet. You love feet, and I hear about it all the time, but I even had a friend who was really into feet. But why? Why didn't you ask your friend? Why? He couldn't explain it. He said he just liked it. Yeah, it's just something that but gets in your neurons. Yeah, if somebody can figure it out, that <laughs> let me well, know. Well, I think fetishes come from the, the deep recesses of our mind, from something that happened in childhood a lot of times, or just... You, What's happening to everybody in childhood where they love feet? Well, you sometimes you erot. Maybe they saw their mother in high heels or something. And their they, mother? Or, yeah, they eroticized it. Or you fetishize it. You fetishize the heels or shoes mm. or women's stuff. I mean, just like anything. People who have fetish for breasts or fetish for women's clothing. Like, it doesn't mean you're gay if you're a man and you like women's underwear. It's just, it just your mind sexualizes certain mm-hmm. things. And women should date guys that have foot fetishes because I'm sure they get fabulous shoes. You know what? That fabulous <laughs> shoes and a great foot massage. Yeah, I'd love a foot massage. Men do not do foot massages enough. Do you know that every woman I know would love that? Really? Yeah, I give amazing foot massages. Do you do that? Yeah, but I haven't done it lately because there's no one. Because you're just hooking up. Oh, they only get the foot massage if you're, like, committed or sleep yeah, with committed. them more they than get, If I have a girlfriend, I give them to the world. Oh. I do. You do? I treat them I You treat throw them Gucci good. bags at them. Through, I throw Gucci bags at them. No, I, I treat them really well. If, if we're together, I treat you really well. That's and nice. then that's why, on the other hand, I don't take no crap, too, because I go, look, I treat you really good. I know I treat you really good. Right. And if you're trying to give me some crap or some flack. Or some brattiness. I ain't going to have it. You treat them well. However, you work a lot so that you don't give them enough time. Yeah. They think. But I, that's the same with me. So it's not that we treat them poorly in that mm-hmm. way. It's just that we like our choose our work. Yeah. Which I'm working on. Okay. Emily. Unfortunately, my work doesn't give me a, a blowjob. 
Exactly. <laughs> oh, I love my new T-shirt. This what? is what we have to. We're going to put oh, a yeah. picture on this episode. Okay. Of me wearing a T-shirt that Menace just bought me. So go to my website, <laughs> sexfamily.com. Yeah. Out. Okay, Emily, enjoying the latest podcast, but can't help but email my thought. Menace and yourself are a bit off with the gold diggers. Not so <laughs> much in the Midwest, saying that the gold diggers are not in the Midwest that much. Chicago is full of them. Come to any spot in the Gold Coast or near north, and they are everywhere, and you hardly hide it. Maybe really? when I was in New York, Miami, and L.A. Never San Fran, unfortunately. I never went to the right place. Keep talking, and can you talk about the preferred lingerie material of women, i.e. silk, cotton, lace, etc.? Peace to you both from Chi-Town, Davis. Um, gold diggers all over the world. There are gold diggers in every city, I'm sure. Did, yeah. you, did you say that the Midwest girls, I think he's referring to a comment you made about yeah. Midwestern girls not being gold diggers I've, as much. Yeah, I don't, I mean, off, I go out there for days at a time, so not that I'm living there, but the girls that I find, they just seem, they just seem more a little, corn little, fed. little more corn fed. I don't have to take them to fancy dinners where I have to get an appointment you don't do that anyway <laughs> <You know? laughs> but uh yeah they i don't know they just seem yeah. a lot cooler um i mean there's a gold digger in everywhere but i think mm-hmm. he also wants to know about uh, preferred lingerie material women silk or cotton or lace i think it's a case-by-case basis silk right mm, no? i think that women like i like i like everything i have everything i've cotton silk lace i think it depends what kind of mood i'm in like i still mm-hmm. think lace is kind of sexy i don't know mm-hmm. i'm just gonna look at my bra i don't have it on now but i have this one bra that i think is really pretty but I stick with like – I don't know, but co- I have cotton underwear too and I, I have everything. I think mm-hmm. you have to ask the woman. And I'm a cotton guy. Cotton? Yeah, cotton. cotton. Keep it real. But silk feels good, doesn't it? It does. I don't know. It just seems cheesy to you? Yeah. I know. You have this thing about lingerie. I think lingerie is cheesy. Okay, honey. <laughs> it's fine. I need to buy some new stuff though. I need some Where do you lingerie. go? Um, I go to different stores. I went to a stripper store last week to buy boots for Halloween. Yeah? I have to show you my Halloween picture. It's really hot. All right. And um, they had the most amazing lingerie in there, and I kind of wanted it all. It wasn't all stripper clothes, mm-hmm. but it was a lot of stripper clothes. Um, but I go to, you know, wherever, department stores. Mm-hmm. I don't buy it. I don't do it a lot. I don't buy a lot of new lingerie. But I should, whenever I start dating someone, I do. So I kind of should do that now. I should go buy lingerie tonight for my weekend plans. Mm-hmm. Not lingerie, but like yeah. new bras and underwear. Mm-hmm. It's on the list. I won't have time. All Forget right. it. Okay. Let's give some uh, – oh, a few – we can what? give a few dating tips. Yeah. All right. Quickly. These are quick dating tips. These are just a few do's and don'ts. Tips to make your first date go smoothly. First dates can be nerve-wracking, and they often render even the most experienced of daters shy, silent, and prone to making awkward and embarrassing mistakes. So here's some chances of getting a second date. Here's some ideas below about you so you'll get a second date even before the initial meeting is over. Here's some pointers to help you put your most attractive foot forward. These might be kind of obvious, but again, I get questions a lot about dating. So, like, what's the best things to do? So, here's some do's and don'ts. Do be on time. The last thing you want to do is make a bad impression by being late. Tardiness implies that you don't care. Even worse, the person you're meeting may not hang around to wait for you. Do make your partner feel comfortable. We're all on edge the first date and the first date with someone. Try to put your partner at ease and get him to relax and help you stay calm and enjoy yourself. Do be interesting on the date. The worst thing you can do is show up with someone and then sit there all night and talk about nothing or stay silent. Don't make yourself easy to forget. That's true. Just come. If you have to read the newspaper or watch TV or think of something interesting to say, think of it. Because I've had those dates where they're like, so, and you hear like the fork clinking. Mm-hmm. Just be interesting. Laugh at their jokes. Even if you heard the joke a hundred times or more, laughing at her jokes will let you know you're interested in them. Interested in them. So these are kind of obvious, but. What is your. My uh, dates. Yeah. My tip of the first date. Same thing. I think that you should ask questions. Don't talk about yourself. Too much. Ask questions about me. I have so many guys who don't ask questions. That is the biggest complaint that I hear from women is mm-hmm. that they went out with a guy. And I think a lot of times it's nerves, but guys mm-hmm. do not ask questions to the woman about her. Like, just ask her anything. Do you like your boss? Do you like your job? Do you like your work? Oh, who's your friends? Do you have a brother, sister? There's so many questions to ask. Are you, were you raised religious? Where did you grow up? Just women love talking about themselves. And it's not that she's not going to – she'll mm-hmm. ask you questions back, hopefully, but just ask questions. And, oh, here's some don'ts. Don't be late. That's the same as being on time. Mm-hmm. Don't talk about yourself all night. Don't talk about past relationships. I agree Hell to that. No. Never talk about your past relationship on the first, second, Hell or third no. date. <laughs> or ever. Or ever. Exactly. Don't eat with your mouth open. I know guys do that. Really? They don't realize it. But how do you tell a guy that he's eating with his mouth open? I don't realize I'm doing it. I don't think you do. 
I've never eaten with you, though. Okay. We've never done anything but had a drink together. <laughs> don't bombard your date with extremely personal questions. Like you, they probably don't want to reveal too much about themselves yet. If you like each other and want to continue after this first meeting, there'll be plenty of time to ask questions and delve deeper. So that's it. On the first date, don't get into, like, your divorce or your, all your issues. Just kind mm-hmm. of try to keep it light. But there's a lot of light, interesting things that you can talk about that, you know, that don't have to be about, like, what's your favorite sex position. Like, don't talk about sex on the first date unless, of course, you're me and I get asked questions about guys. Whenever I go with guys, they ask me questions all the time about sex because they think, I'm, well, I know you're used to this. So yeah, do you yeah. think I should shave my balls? Yeah. I'm like, really? Do when whatever I'm, you want. When I'm dropping loads, where do you think I should put them? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Don't forget to thank the other person for the date. That is so true. You have to always think. I always send thank you emails or texts right after the date. Mm-hmm. Don't you like when a girl thanks you after you take her out? Uh, or you don't care? Uh, I don't care. Really? Well, no, I like them responding back because now it doesn't feel like I'm bothering them. Right. Because they didn't respond to me after going out with me. Right. Yeah. So at least I know they're... Interested in maybe hanging out again. Right. Yeah. Okay. But I might just be thanking you and not interested in hanging out again. Yeah. But anyway, you don't know for sure. Do you go somewhere unique? First dates don't have to be the movies or to a restaurant for a nice meal. You will make a longer lasting impression if you get creative. I don't know about that. I'd say get creative but not too creative. Like I have a friend who guys was like, let's go on a hike. And she hates hiking. And he wanted to go see a band. And she doesn't uh. like bands. And it's like, you just don't be, there's stuff you can do, but don't be too creative. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. Okay, guys. So thank you so much for listening to the show. I really appreciate it. Email me. Uh, was the show, was it good for <laughs> you? Email me. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. So you know I'm obsessed with candles, right? Have you ever heard of massage oil candles? Okay, so get this. I always light candles when I'm enjoying a glass of wine with friends. And recently, they were over, and I lit three candles for my new line called Emily and Tony. My skin felt really dry, so I went ahead and poured some of it on my hands, and I gave myself a quick massage. My friends were stunned that I did this, and immediately were obsessed. And here's why. See, these candles are really aromatherapy massage oils that, when warmed like a candle, they melt into the most luxurious body oil that is super hydrating, leaves your skin feeling and smelling amazing, and it's perfect for massaging your partner or yourself. You can use it during foreplay, and you know me. I'm a firm believer in foreplay. They come in delicious flavors like creme de vanilla, cocoa, and fougere. Not just that, they look great in your home. So help us keep this podcast free. Check them out today at emilyandtony.com. And you're welcome.